Jason, as the uh, sales director of Mazak, you've been heavily involved here at the investment at GW Martin. Um, several machines, uh, unbelievable how well the company's done recently. I want to talk to you about the Hyper Quadrex though. What, why, where would this machine fit and why was this purchased by GW Martin? What's it do? Okay, so this, this stands again going back to our portfolio and looking at the application itself. You know, they've got two, four successful multiplexes within the organisation. Um, but they approached us with a particular application. Um, so again, sitting down with their expertise, our expertise, looking at the cycle time, um, we had to be, we were driven by cycle time, we were driven by drum beat, we were driven by lights out machining, we had to get a balance between head one and head two. And is that really where this machine scores then, the fact you've got, you've got two spindles, you've got two turrets, what you're trying to do is balance the operations to essentially get half the top machine in time for free? Absolutely, so spindle two needs to help spindle one and spindle one needs to help spindle two. But we were tasked um, to do some deep, deep hole drilling on this machine as well. So we put 70 bar coolant on the top turret to ensure we could hit tool life and cycle time with that deep hole as well. And what's important about a machine like this and how it's built? I mean, one thing Richard said to me is it was quite a bit bigger than some of his other machines, yet it was far sturdier. That's quite an integral part, certainly with the operations you're talking about with U-drilling and, and lots of metal removal, isn't it? Well, well, the stability comes in the turrets itself, um, and also both turrets have got Y-axis on the travel as well. So it's a very rigid machine, it's a true slant bed machine. Um, we're running high butt collet chocks on head one, head two, for e ease of transfer as well. And can you do the same on the back that you can do on the front? Is there any restrictions? Because sometimes you look at a twin turret machine and you'll go, do you know what, I need to do most of the machining on, on head one just because it's got more power, it might have a bigger bar capacity, and then you do your, your inferior operations on the back. Is that the case with this particular machine? No, it's not the case at all. We've got, we've got equal capacity, capability on head one, head two, so you can balance that cycle time out. And the programming of parts, and certainly the application you talk about, was that done at the machine or was it done offline? It was done offline because it was such a, a fine tuning of the process that we had to balance the cycle time out between head one and head two. So although we've got full Mazatrol control on the machine, it was done in an EIA ISO operation. But when the programme comes into the machine, the processing time is critical, isn't it? And I, I do know and I've, I've heard that these controls really do chew code, don't they? Well, it is, and it's not, it's not just about the control, it's, it's the package that comes with the control. So if you look at the servo motors, the response time at the servo motors, the accelerate and decelerate on, on both spindles, it's all fine-tuning it down to seconds. And for those that say these machines are just for that long run, that isn't necessarily the case, is it, these days? No, it's not the case. You know, we do have small uh, subcontractors out there, all contractors that are doing small batch quantities throughout the day, uh, quick changeovers, 50 off, 100 off, and then they'll run it on the night for lights out machining as well on the larger batch quantities. They've got true flexibility there, really. Yeah, I suppose you've got probing, you've got a, an easy-to-use control. Like you say, the work holding's quick to change. Um, Jason, final couple of words on GW's Martin's investment. You're seeing a lot of this with Mazak and automation at the moment, aren't you? And, and these pretty sophisticated bits of kit. Absolutely. I mean, this investment's here. You know, we had to turn this around in two weeks, Paul. Richard came on board, said, look, we need a machine. The contract's grown. John McNally, the area sales manager, got straight onto it. Applications are straight onto it. The machine was in within two weeks. Full application support on site, up and running within three weeks. Now the pair of us have both worked with Richard many, many years ago. So you would, you would probably be, be fair to say he's a man that knows a machine, doesn't he? He wouldn't make a mistake in his selection, would he? Must be no, a good, good no, uh, no, there, testament to you. Rich, I mean, to be fair to Richard, he has purchased these machines, not on my relationship, not on the ASM's relationship. It's about the true investment of the machine, the company that's supporting it, the company that's going to deliver it, and the team moving forward as well. So I don't think it'll stop here. I think this is just the start of many, really. Um, and Richard will be back for more.